The purpose of this video is to de demonstrate how you can check whether or not a Simulink model is time invariant. Um, we'll do that by going through an example of the system that you see here on the uh, on the screen. Uh, basically, the system is a system that um, modulates a baseband signal X to a carrier frequency omega zero. It's used a lot in communication systems. Uh, although today we're not going to really care about its function, we're just going to try to see if it's time invariant. Um, again, the way you can ch check to see if a system is time invariant is uh, uh, put a signal into the system, get the output of the signal, and then delay the output by some value tau. And then you take your input, delay it by tau, run it through your system. Uh, in the previous videos we've called this x sub d for delayed. This gives you y sub d. And the question then is whether or not these two guys are equal. So to do this in Simulink, we're actually going to take two copies of the system and one we're going to run x through and then delay the output. The other one we're going to delay the input and see what the output is and see if these two inputs and outputs are equal. So that's basically where we're headed. If we go to Simulink, I've already put together a uh, model. So we have the input, which in this case is going to be a step that goes from 0 to 1 at time 1. And it's multiplied by a sine wave. Um, which has a frequency of 1. And uh, the, the, this is the thing that multiplies them, and then we have the output. And so this shows what the output is um, if you don't do any delays or anything like that. So the first step in determining whether or not this, uh, this uh, system that we have here is time invariant is to turn our system which consists of these two blocks into just a single block. And so we do that with the create subsystem command. So I right, I selected the things that uh, are in the system, right clicked on that selection and uh, said create subsystem. If I double click on the subsystem, you can see that I have an input, I have an output, and I have the sine wave that's multiplying the input to produce the output. Okay, so the first thing we need to do uh, is we have the system with the input. We need to add a delay to that output. So we go to our Simulink library browser. We go to the continuous menu. And we go to the variable time delay block. And now we double click on the block and uh, basically um, okay, so we're going to set up um, an input. Uh, let's see. Um, well, this input, the top input, is uh, the signal coming in. The bottom input is going to give us our time delay, and we'll arbitrarily choose a time delay of 2. So this is setting tau equal to 2. Now, in general, if you want to show that a system is time invariant, you would have to show that you get the same thing no matter what delay you choose. So in our case, we're choosing 2, but um, there's a lot of, uh, we'd have to look at a lot of other values. So we're going to take a constant. And we're going to tell it 2, and that's going to be our time delay. And then we're going to run this into our scope. So let's see if we've got this right. So we run the simulation, and we click on the scope. And you can see now that there is a delay um, going from uh, uh, the unit step function, which went up at 1, now goes up at 3. Okay. Um, 
Okay, so hopefully, hopefully this will work. So now we're going to take our, uh, well actually, before we make a copy of our uh, system that we're testing, we're going to turn this delay thing into a subsystem as well. So now we can copy our system that we're investigating, and we'll bring that down. Oops. We'll bring that down here. And we'll copy our delay and now we're going to put that on the input and then we're going to have another scope okay so we have the output of our system under test we have the delay here we hook this up. So now we run the simulation. We open up the scope one, scope two. We try to find them, which is not all that easy with um, the Mac implementation. Okay, here's the original scope. Here's the revised scope, and so if we expand this so the scale on the two is the same, you'll notice that these are not at all the same. Um, <coughs> these are not at all the same. Uh, basically, uh, the first one we've delayed the uh, output and so the sine wave is delayed. On the second one we've delayed the input and so where the sine wave starts to get multiplied uh, by the input is delayed. So because these two are not the same we can say then that our system that we're looking at, um, this, this guy here is not a time invariant system, it is time varying. Okay, so this is an example of how you can check to see whether or not a system is time invariant using Simulink. Uh, again, in this case, we had a value of 2 for tau. Now, it's all you need is one example to show that a system is not time invariant, but to show that a system is time invariant, in principle, you would need to look at all possible inputs and all possible delays. Okay, so I would need to be able to look at all possible values for tau and all possible inputs. In practice, that's impossible. There's just no way you can uh, you can look at every possible input at every possible delay. Uh, what you typically find, though, is um, if you can show that the system looks like it's time invariant for a couple of different delays, and uh, it works for uh, a unit step function and for sinusoids there's a reasonably good chance that it's going to be time invariant. Again with this method you can't prove that it's time invariant but most realistic systems that you see um, should be reasonably clear how to determine if something is time uh, or you should be able to use a couple examples to determine if it's time invariant. So that concludes this video.